Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of the Life Facebook, a journey through ideology. Last episode and last week we discussed uh, the fitrah of a person, uh, as our esteemed guest likes to call it, the default setting. Inshallah, this week we will be going, we'll be moving on from proving the existence of God through the perfection of creation, and we're going to look at it from another angle. Inshallah, before I welcome on our esteemed guest, I would like to remind the viewers that if you do want to call in and ask the Sheikh a question, you can call in on 0203-515-0199 or alternatively, you can WhatsApp in your questions in the number down below. But without further ado, Sheikh, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Habibi bin Hal. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah wa shukr. Always an honor to be with you. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Thank you. So, Sheikh, the last couple of weeks, uh, our focus has been on the establishing the existence of God. What's the next stage to the book Haqq al Yaqeen by Sayyid Abdullah Shabbar? Ahsantum. So, coming back and leading on to the chronology of the book, the Sayyid begins by existing establishing the existence of a deity or call it creator or call it superpower mm. an entity that is responsible for the existence of this creation okay. an entity that is responsible for this creation coming into existence and we analyzed two proofs. The first one, when you look into the perfection within the system of creation, the occurrence, and this is where the fine points come in. It is not only looking at the existence of everything within creation. It is analyzing the perfection within creation okay. that allows you to deduce the conclusion that there has to be a master architect who has planned very carefully, very meticulously this creation in its perfection. Mm -hmm. Because our key conclusion was that perfection of creation across multiple fronts cannot happen by chance, cannot happen by coincidence. Yeah, yeah. This was one proof. The second proof, as you mentioned in your uh, introduction, the proof of fitrah, mm -hmm. yani this so-called default setting within us, the urge and the need to unwillingly, subconsciously call out, yeah. number one, to a higher power of belief in times of distress. And number two, again, there's a finer difference is the human urge to believe mm -hmm in a belief system, mm -hmm. which is why we said that even when the atheist comes and tells you or when a faithless person comes and tells you that I'm faithless, we say actually that statement according to Mantek, mm -hmm. according to the sciences of logic, there's a fallacy yeah. because you cannot say you're faithless, Yani, you believe that you do not believe in anything. Yani, sure, this is a belief as well. You yeah. have faith that there is no other faith. Yani, it's a Contradiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So having established this, you find that the next stage, uh, Marhum Sayyid goes into the chapter, he says, Faslu Thani. So the, se the second sub-chapter. And this is Tawheedullah Ta'ala. Okay. So the second sub-chapter in understanding the Creator is the chapter of Tawheed. And look at the logic behind the chronology. After having established the existence of a deity or a superpower responsible for this creation, the next step now is to establish and to understand how many deities are there. Mm. 
How many superpowers are there? Mm. Yeah, I mean, how many gods are there? Yeah, yeah. What is the proof for a single god? If a person comes and claims that there are two gods or three gods or multiple gods, what is the proof for these multiple gods? Existence of multiple gods, number one. And number two, on the other hand, what is the proof for the existence of a single god? Fair point. So, the Sayyid comes out with the introduction on Tawheedullah Ta'ala. And you will find that in this chapter, Tawheed, yani, loosely translated as the oneness of Allah. Yeah, yeah. Very loosely translated. You look at majority of the translations within the books of Kalam and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Tawheed, yani, the unity of Allah or the oneness of Allah. You find over here that the Sayyid begins the discussion with Tawheed, oneness of Allah, beginning the definition, dives into the definition of the oneness of Allah, and then he goes on to state the hadith and verses of the Quran that would disprove the multiplicity of the creators. Okay. Yeah, and he, wow. Having defined what is the meaning of Tawheed, yeah, yeah, yeah. having solidified this understanding of Tawheed, mm -hmm. the next step now is to go and refute mm. uh, the concept of multiplicity of gods. Okay. So again, what is understood from the style of the author is that first you establish the tenets of the faith before you dive into discussions or... Uh, Debates about those things that have shubuhat. Okay. And you find that uh, in essence, Habib Minhal, from you know, when you study into these books and uh, you understand the manhaj yeah. of the scholars who write these books, you are subconsciously also taking life lessons. Mm. And you find that this in itself is a life lesson, ya subhanallah, which is, aji which is applicable to each and every one of us. Definitely. Many times we enter into a debate having not understood the principles of the truth that we ourselves are trying to defend. That's very true. Sahih Lola. That's very true. <laughs> Many times you will find that um, you have discussions about imamah. Mm. The concept of imamah. Who are the person who wants to debate about the issue of imama? Perhaps the principles of imama themselves he does not fully understand. Mm. How do you go and defend the concept which you yourself do not understand? And this is applicable over not only interfaith dialogue but intrafaith dialogue as well. Yani within our own sect, within our own school of thought, Shiaism. You find that many times the internal discussions that happen around, you find that and the ikhtilafat that exist, mm. many times we dive into these debates without having fully understood. And what I mean by having fully understood, يعني بالدليل وبالبرهان with proof, solidified proof, we ourselves many times the concept that we are trying to defend we ourselves do not understand that concept to its core. Yeah. And hence what happens, the debate becomes a debate of opinion. Mm -hmm. The debate becomes a debate where haq is mixed with batil. And rather than consolidating the ikhtilafat, mm -hmm. what happens? The ikhtilafat become wider and wider. Yeah, and this worse. is applicable over everything we have in our mm -hmm. faith. Take it from the concept of ghulu when it comes to imama, the concept of Taqseer when it comes to Imama, the concept of Sha'air Husseiniya, mm. a lot of these arguments. Mm. You find that the side that wants to debate either one of the sides, their grounding in these principles in itself are not solid. Mm. This is just the Anibayn al Kausain, yeah, something yeah. between the brackets that we take. You find that the Sayyid comes forward and in this topic of Tawheed, he begins by saying that in Tawheed fil Jumla fituri kama ushira ilayhi sabikan. He says, as we established previously, mm. that belief in Tawheed is an amr which is fituri, mm -hmm. right? Something that is 
instinct within us. Mm-hmm. And then he goes on to say, وَالْمُرَادْ مِنَ التَّوْحِيدِ مَعْنَيَانَ See, all of us say, even from young age in madrasa, Sunday school, Hawza Ilmiya, whatever. Tawheed, yani God is one. Yeah. <coughs> Somebody was to ask you definition of Tawheed. Unity of Allah, oneness. oneness. of God, yeah. Oneness of God. Yeah. Nothing more, nothing less. <coughs> Excuse me. The Sayyid over here comes and says that Tawheed is actually divided across two meanings. Okay. Wow. Tawheed, the understanding of Tawheed, your belief in Tawheed Mm -hmm. has to compromise, has to be compromised of two parts. Okay. Number one, awalan, adamul juz'iyyah. Right. And number two, adamul sharik. Ya'ni, adamul juz'iyyah, the inability to or the non possibility of division mm-hmm. the non possibility of division yep. and number 2 adam sharik the non possibility of a partner so that's that's <coughs> believing that there's no possibility of division ah santo okay yani the single entity yeah which we are referring to through the concept of tawhid means that it cannot be separated into parts. Okay. Like how you have the parts make up the sum. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A number of different individual parts make up a whole. Yep. In Tawheed, the correct understanding of Tawheed, the accurate understanding of Tawheed, La. Mm. So you see, it's very important. Very it's important. not only Tawheed does not mean, and yani Tawheed asal min usulu din. The first question that is asked in the in the question in the grave yeah. is in regards to Tawheed. Man rabbuk. Now, if your understanding of Tawheed is not correct, I ishkal. Oh, Our yeah, understanding yeah. of Allah, if it is not correct, as we established in the previous episodes, is called in the acceptance of our furu'uddin. Okay. Because we are not worshipping wow. that true Allah. Wow. But perhaps we are worshipping an imagination yeah. or a fiction of our, a creation of our own mental understanding. Mm-hmm. So the Sayyid comes and says, your belief in Tawheed, is divided into two parts or is comprised of, more accurately, not divided, is comprised of two aspects. The non-possibility of division for this single entity. The single entity can be divided into parts. And number two, Adam al-Sharik, this single entity, the non-possibility of this single entity having any other partner or any other equal. Okay. Both these two things joined together is the meaning of Tawheed. tawheed. Okay. So oneness of Allah or unity of Allah mm-hmm. in a nutshell comprises of these two aspects. Mm-hmm. And then having said this, the Sayyid then goes on to say, Rawa as fi tawheed musnadan anhani ibn shuraih. Shaykh as in his book, Tawheed narrates a tradition on authority of Hani ibn Shuraih. Okay. So again, you find over here within the style of the author, the Sayyid, he refers back to Sheikh al-Saduq. Yes. Look at how the tradition of the scholars and the mm. seerah of the scholars in that they refer back to those who are before them. This yeah, is something yeah, yeah. which is very important. Of the seerah of the ulama of the past yep. is something that we don't only read for autobiography and to preserve history, la, yeah, but their mannerisms of uh, istidlal mm-hmm. is important, particularly when it comes to usul al-fiqh and even, even when it comes to usul al-din and ilmu al-kalam. Yeah. We need to look back at the seerah of those ulama before us. The yeah. manners in which they tackled, the manners in which they came forward and addressed the issues of 
التوحيد ان علموا الكلام only Allah knows what they've been through to preserve the message of the Ahlul Bayt احسنتم عند يعني شيخ الصدوق by the way again بين القوسين شيخ صدوق lived at very difficult times and I don't want to divert the conversation towards شيخ صدوق because I also know that you all are currently making the show on on the pioneers of the faith and I believe that you you have something yourself or one of the brothers you have something coming up on شيخ صدوق as well insha Allah so I'm sure this is already covered in regards to the life of Sheikh Sadduq, insha'Allah. This is from the barakat of your juhud and the juhud of the brothers in the insha channel, insha'Allah. All for the, the Ahlul Bayt, Insha'Allah. But you find that Sheikh Sadduq lived at difficult times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sheikh Sadduq is a special personality. Yani his father, just to give you a glimpse, the father of Sheikh Sadduq, uh, they lived at the time of uh, Ghaybat al-Sughra. Okay. Leading and Sheikh Sadduq into Ghaybat al Kubra. Wow. For Sheikh Sadduq's father, the current Sheikh Sadduq, the one who we're referring to, Sahib Kitab al Tawheed, mm -hmm. and the author of Man La Yahdaruhu al Fakih, wow, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. one of our major texts of uh, a hadith yep. that have been compiled. And no Marjat Taklid can become a Marjat Taklid without having mastered the book Man La Yahdaruhu al Fakih. Wow. wow. Fa you find that Sheikh Sadduq's father went to Hussein ibn Ruh and Nawbakhti, yeah. the fourth Naib fourth of ambassador. Imam Sahib al Amri wa Zaman, Ajalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. And he asks Hussein ibn Ruh and Nawbakhti, Can you please convey mm. a wish of mine to Imam Sahib al Amr? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask him. To pray for us, ask him to grant for me a child who will be a servant of Islam. Subhanallah. The dua of Maulana Sahib al Amr, yeah. directing your hajat through the Imam of your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sheikh Sadduq's father was blessed with a son like Sheikh Sadduq. How Sheikh much Sadduq more came on, Sheikh Sadduq came on the dua of Imam Sahib al Asr al Zaman. Ahsan, he was. <laughs> yani the uh, the miraculousness and yeah. the and the, and the and the holiness and the reverence towards his personality Definitely. from the time of inception. A person who is born by the barakat of the prayers of Imam al Hujjah. Wow, Subhanallah. And this in itself is also a lesson for us yeah, 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 when yeah. we go through difficulties in our life. When not all, yes, when we go through difficulties in our life, we call out to Imam al hujjah for intercession. Definitely. This is the Imam whom Allah Azza wa Jal has given authority and power over everything in the realm of creation. Yes. It cannot be shirk because we said Allah has given him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. As soon as we say that, <laughs> yani, we close Just the door for shirk. For the, huh? Make that clear for the viewers out there. Ahsan, so that we don't we get close the of door shirk. for shirk <laughs> when we say that Allah Azza wa Jal has given the power to the imam. <laughs> because Ani, uh, the ishqal of the outsider is something you can uh, handle. Yeah, the problem yeah, is the ishqal that comes from within. Definitely, definitely. Fa, Allah Azza wa Jal has given him the power and authority over everything within wujud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are we when it comes to seeking intercession from the master of our time? There are Imam al-Hujjah, Ajallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif says, there is not a single affair, to paraphrase, there is not a single affair of yours which we are not aware of. Every difficulty I go through my life, every yeah. challenge that I go through my life, every success I have in my life, the manner in which I live my life, the Choices and the decisions that I make in my life under the watch of the Imam. Subhanallah. It is important for us to build this relationship with Imam Sahib al Amr. Definitely. And you find over here. For this is about Sheikh al Sadduq. Yeah. In his book Tawheed, he has authored a book of Tawheed together mm. with all his writings. Sheikh Sadduq authored the book of Tawheed. Why did he do that though? Interesting question. 
Yeah. The Book of Tawheed is a compilation mm. of hadith from Ahlul Bayt in regards to understanding the unity of Allah Azza wa Jal, understanding yeah. your Creator. And you find that Sheikh Saduq Rahmatullah himself states that I seek proximity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by writing this book. Mm. And the reason that I'm writing this book is that the Mukhalifin, the greater uh, Muslim denominations and sects, yeah. they have attacked the Shia Madhab because of certain hadith found within the books mm. which they failed to understand yeah, yeah, yeah. and as a result of that they have tarnished our faith and accused our followers of being those who do shirk or those who believe in the tashbih yani the manifestation of god in human forms wow. so he says because these mukhalifin have attacked us and have accused us and have distanced us and isolated us yeah. because they came across hadith which they didn't understand mm. and as a result blamed us of XYZ and this entire Shia faith has been isolated and has been known for misconceptions and deviations bombarded with Bombarded is the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got to remember these are times that are turbulent. These are times where the ghaib, the Shia Ummah is relatively new yeah. in this era of ghaibah. New and oppressed. Oppressed for sure. Oppressed yeah. yani taba'an. From the time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was martyred, the Shia have been oppressed. From that time wow. onwards and until today. Fa you find that Sheikh Saduq, Sheikh Saduq comes up with this writing at a very crucial time. You look at the entire context in which he authors the book. Imam is in Ghaiba. It's a very relatively new era. The mm -hmm. Shia Ummah is, you can almost say, learning to stand on its feet and cope with maintaining its religion without having access to the Imam like the previous people did. Yeah. At least in a relative manner. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Everything is gone. Whatever you have in regards to the communication with the Imam has to go through the Naib. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. Imam's whereabouts are not known. People have sh doubts in their mind whether the Imam exists or not. And then on top of that, the Mukhalifin have come and have bombarded your faith. And this is the important part, Sheikh Saduk Neraj. They attacked us. Lijahalihim. Yeah. Due to the ignorance of what they found in the texts. Yaani, there are hadith, there are hadith in regards to the description of Allah yeah. Azza wa Jal, which they did not understand, and as a result of they attacked the entire madhab and labeled us as those who have deviated. But the same thing today, we don't see Majus and I don't know, no. all these things that come around. The Shia are the Majus and <laughs> Jahad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one thing, for example, example that comes into my mind, and I find that this is a concern, not only from the Mukhalifin. Yani the Ishkal is not only from the Mukhalifin, but it's also from those who are within us. See, mm. we have to strengthen our belief in-house. Yeah. As we propagate outside, we also have to protect our ha Definitely. faith in-house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hadith like Yadullah. Narrations that come out and say Aliyun, for example, Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam. Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam Ali ibn Abi Talib is Yadullah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard of that. Narrations along these lines. Yeah. Now, the Mukhalif, or even the ones who are within our shokos, straight away they come and they say, Oh, look at this Hulu, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you people are attributing human features to Allah Azza wa Jal, and this is how you talk about Imam Ali and deviated and kafir shirk and everything doing. The understanding over here is mm. the term Yadullah 
the hand of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you find this, that Ali, Yabn Abi Talib, alayhi salam, is Yadullah, mm. we have to come and see, do we take this hadith by something that is at its metaphorical level, low at its hakiki level, for example, literal level? No, of course. And number two, has this terminology, Yadullah, has it been used in the Quran or no? Ahna mm. Yadullah we have within the Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hand of Allah Azza wa is on top of their Hajj. Yeah. So we under now when the Quran says Yadullah, that does it mean it's a physical hand of no, Allah with of five not. fingers and a hand? La, <laughs> it means the indicates something metaphorical, yeah. something much greater. One example from the many examples that are there. The hand of God mm. supposed to be one example of many or one answer of many. Yeah. The hand of God is a metaphorical phrase that signifies the strength of Allah. Yeah. The wow. strength yeah, of yeah, the yeah. creator, yani the hand. Mm -hmm. One example, the strength of the creator. When we say Yadullah is Ali ibn Abi Talib, yani the strength of Allah is demonstrated through Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that haq for which Rasulullah wanted to spread on earth, that message of haq from Allah yeah, yeah, yeah. was defended and protected through Amir al muminin That's actually, that's interesting. <laughs> that's Fa, that. Like the way you said, the lion of Allah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does it mean the actual lion? No. no. Lion of Allah the, shows you the warrior that defended the principles of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's the same thing with, you know, when they try, um, when they try to bring people to Islam. Yes. And the, the people that, are, that, that they're trying to bring, they say, oh no, but your Quran says, kill the disbelievers, so why are you not killing me? And they tell you, no, it's not the literal meaning. Yeah. Well, why do you have exceptions? Why don't you have exceptions? Why do you not say that? When Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib says, Anna Allah, Anna Yadullah, I'm the face yeah. of God, I'm the hand of God. Why do, you not, does it, why do you not tell them that it's a metaphorical meaning? Why do you have to take the literal meaning? Because it goes against their interest. Then. Yeah. So, Ahsanto, it's a very fair point. Hence, we come and we say that there are rules mm. for interpretation of Quran. And there are rules and there are guidelines when it comes to interpretation of the hadith. Mm -hmm. Where... You know, within Usul al-Fiqh, we've got an entire chapter known as Bahthul al fadh mm -hmm. The topic of words, yani the subject, the chapter of words. Mm -hmm. A chapter upon chapter, pages after pages. Ya akhi, you, will spend up, you could end up spending years, years just understanding the impact of words when it comes to deducing the right meaning yeah, yeah, yeah. there are certain places where words are used to denote something metaphorical there are certain places where words are used to denote its literal meaning and for each of these there are rules regulations procedures and entire science behind deducing which usage is used in which context yeah in addition to the fact that we have the Ahlul Bayt and the Quran who actually explain for us mm -hmm. what is the intended meaning from all yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Ahsant. So you find that this is the context behind which Sheikh al Saduq begins to author this book, Kitab al Tawheed. Not necessarily because of uh, hadith for of this hadith aliyun wajhullah or yadullah mm. but we are saying we're using this as an example in that the mukhalifin failed to understand what was in the books in regards to tawheed and as a region they came and they attacked the entire faith with tashbih yeah. and uh, uh, all sorts of wow. accusations isolating yeah, yeah, yeah. us and it is with this uh, to dispel yeah. all these misconceptions he comes forward to establish the understanding of Tawheed as per or for the school of Ahlul Bayt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what better individuals to use other than Ahlul Bayt when you want to show the face of Tashayyu <laughs> when it comes to Tawheed? Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Shaykhna, thank you very much for giving us beautiful insight. 
on uh, the chapter of Tawheed, inshallah. I'd like to remind the viewers, if you do want to call and ask the Sheikh a question, the number is 0203. 5150199 alternatively WhatsApp in your questions in the number down below inshallah we'll see you after the break Welcome back to the second segment of the live Facebook a journey through ideology um, Once again, another reminder for the viewers If you do want to call in and ask the Sheikh a question The number is 0203-515-0199 Alternatively, what's up in your questions in the number down below So Sheikh, before the break We were discussing about Sheikh al-Saduq And the chapter of Tawheed Can we dive into the Hadith now? Of course For the hadith goes on yeah. as follows. Inna Arabian kama yawmal jamal ila amir al-mu'mineen alayhi salam. Fakal atakul inna Allah wahid fahamal al-nas alayhi wa kalu ya Arabi ama tara ma fihi amir al-mu'mineen min taksim al-qalb. فقال أمير المؤمنين دعوه فإن الذي يريده الأعرابي هو الذي نريده من القوم. The narration goes on to say that Hani ibn Shurayh he says that an Arabi يعني desert dweller term that is used يعني for you could say uncultured person. Yeah. Right. He approached Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam on the day of Jamal. Okay. So the battle of Jamal. Which was the first war he fought. Which was uh, the first war he fought after the martyrdom of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And uh, Jamal, yani, an important historical event mm -hmm. where... Aisha bint Abu Bakr wages war against Amir al-Mu'minin yeah. alayhi salam. So the hadith says that this person, the Arabi, comes to Amir al-Mu'minin on the day of the war. Mm -hmm. During the war of Jamal, as the battle of Jamal is taking place. Okay. And he says to him, he approaches Amir al-Mu'minin and he says to him, Atakulu inna Allah wahid. He came and he asked Amir al-Mu'minin and he says, do you believe, do you say that God is one? فَهَمَلَ nas عَلَيْهِ وَقَالُوا The people yeah. attacked, they jumped on this guy. Yeah, and yeah. they said to him, Do you see the state in which Amir al-Mu'mineen is? This is a state of war, he's in the battle, he's at the forefront. Yeah. Why are you trying to distract him? <laughs> and do you think this is the appropriate time to come and ask him about Tawheed? <laughs> yani, do you believe in one God? Uh, should I? <laughs> so, that we're in a problem over here. The Ummah is being divided into two. You have one side Amirul Mu'mineen. One side you have so-called Ummul Mu'mineen. You have the path of Haq. You have the path of Batil. Mm -hmm. And the Ummah is within this 10,000 people died in the battle of Jamal, by the way. Wow. Because Aisha, Zubair, Talha, the likes of them went against the government of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Went against the justice. They could not handle the justice of Amir al-Mu'mineen in addition to many other things. Yeah. And so you can imagine that in this situation, in the heat of the battle, the person comes and asks Amir al-Mu'mineen. The people want to attack him. They want to take him away. They're rebuking him. How can you even ask such a question at such a time? Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> <coughs> what is the reaction of Amir al-Mu'mineen? Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam says, Da'aw. Leave him. Mm. Don't harass him. Don't try and shush him up. 
Don't intimidate him. Yeah. Let him come and ask the question. Look at the answer of Amir al-Mu'mini. Akhlaq. Akhlaq bila shak. Wow. Akhlaq without doubt. But if you were amazed by the akhlaq of Amir al-Mu'mini, if you are intrigued by the akhlaq of Amir al-Mu'mini, how can you not be amazed by such a man? Ya Habibi, if you are intrigued by this, yeah. get ready to listen what Amir al says after this. Wow. The leave him. فَإِنَّ الَّذِي يُرِيدُهُ الْأَعْرَابِ هُوَ الَّذِي نُرِيدُهُ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ We want people to ask questions. لا لا بابا He says What this Arabi wants to know in regards to Tawheed is what we want the entire Muslim Ummah to know. Okay. Meaning what the battle of Jamal Revolved around the true understanding of Tawheed. Okay. Wow. Amirul Mu'minin is trying to tell us. Yeah. This one Arabi has come. He has asked me to prove Tawheed. Or mm. he's asking me what is Tawheed. Don't shush him up. Because the people that we are fighting against. The reason why these people have faced have come into opposition against me did not understand, do not understand Tawheed to begin with. Wow, powerful. When we say that Amirul Mu'mineen is the party of Haq, <laughs> these are not emotional statements. No, definitely not. And when we come and we condemn the other party and when we shed light on the consequences and the evils mm -hmm. of the battle of Jamal and for the crimes that Aisha committed, it's not to stir sectarian violence no. wala to antagonize other people. But we're talking about an issue of his haq, historically speaking. Who do you follow when it comes to Haq? Amirul Mu'minin is saying, فَإِنَّ الَّذِي يُرِيدُهُ الْأَعْرَابِ هُوَ الَّذِي نُرِيدُهُ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ If they were firm and established in their understanding of Tawheed, so we wouldn't even be here. Of course. Of course. <coughs> Excuse me. فَقَالْ Intriguing answer. Huh? Definitely he's you, you would have expected him to tell the people, uh, get rid of this guy, we're fighting. <laughs> but he said, we Ahsan, want people to know this. Look at the issue yeah, that yeah. is at hand. Amir Mu'minin is saying they are in opposition against me because they didn't understand Tawheed. Wow, it's not that they didn't understand my Khilafah. No, no. They didn't understand the oneness of God. Ahsan. Wow. From here you understand the seriousness of the battle of Jamal. Wow. Call the answer of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Ya Arabi, inna al-kawl anna Allah wahidun ala arba'at aksam. Okay. Look at the answer of Amir al-Mu'mineen. When we say that God is one, this is compromised of four parts. Mm -hmm. It's comprised of four parts. Mm -hmm. When you say God is one, there are four elements towards this oneness of Allah. Yeah. In the beginning, you find that Sayyid Shabbar divides Tawheed into two, Adam al juziyyah and Adam al-Shariq. Mm. Non-possibility of division and non-possibility of a partner. Yeah, yeah. Over here you find that he has summarized these two from the hadith of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Mm. Amir al-Mu'mineen is obviously the master. He goes into more depth. For the understanding of Tawheed, oneness of Allah, is comprised of four elements, okay. four dimensions. مِنْهُمَا لَا يَجُوزَانْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Meaning. Tawheed, the concept of Tawheed can be comprised of four parts. Mm. It can be comprised of four parts. Two parts or two elements of this are false, while two elements of these are accurate and correct. Which means what? 
<laughs> it is not per it is not sufficient for me to say I believe in the Tawheed of Allah. Because through the hadith of Amir al muminin we understand that you could believe in Tawheed, but if your belief of Tawheed is based on these two faculties that are wrong, then you have missed the point. Yeah. You have not understood the Bari. Yani, you could still claim to be a Muwahid, but because your understanding is in these two aspects or these two categories that are incorrect. Wow. And he says there are two categories of Tawheed which are correct and acceptable. Okay. And then he goes into the explanation. فَأَمَّا الَّذَانْ لَا يَجُوزَانْ عَلَيْهِ yani Two understandings of Tawheed that are incorrect. Yeah. Two dimensions of Tawheed that are incorrect. Yeah. Number one, فَقَوْلُ الْقَائِلْ وَاحِدْ يَقْصُدْ بِهِ بَابُ الْأَعْدَادِ فَهَذَا مَا لَا يَجُوزْ He says, if your understanding of Tawheed is that God is one, mm. but your usage of the word, your understanding of the word one yeah. is from a numerical dimension or restricted Ooh. to a numerical dimension, yeah. then that understanding is incorrect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ajeeb. Why? Ama tara annahu kafara man kal thalithu thalatha. Yeah. Do you True. not see those who disbelieved when they made God one of three or divided one into three? Mm. So if you're under, so what Amir al muminin is saying over here is that when we say Tawheed, yani God is one, the understanding is not that this one is restricted to the numerical understanding of one no. or this one is entirely compromised of the numerical number one because the numerical number from a numerical perspective the number one mm. can be replicated and increased to two yeah. and that two can be replicated and increased to three wow so if your understanding of the concept of one is from a numerical perspective where this one can be added to another one and to a third one. Amir al says, says, this belief of Tawheed, this understanding of Tawheed is incorrect okay. from a numerical perspective. Yeah, yeah. Now, and you will see what Amir al is pointing towards. And then he goes on to say, وَقَوْلُ الْقَائِلْ هُوَ وَاحِدْ مِنَ النَّاسِ يُرِيدْ بِهِ النَّوْءْ مِنَ الْجِنْسِ فَهَذَا لَا يَجُوزْ عَلَيْهِ لِأَنَّهُ التَّشْبِيحِ So, when we say that Allah Azza wa Jal is one, mm -hmm. but not confined, restricted or encompassed through the numerical understanding, this is to establish within our thoughts that when we say God is one, yani this one as a numerical number cannot be replicated and then added or from this addition derive or mm. extract another number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you use the number one to add to a certain value. To another value. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? When you want to add to any other value, that starting point is one. <laughs> you have to, that minimum starting point is one. Yeah. So it is not from that understanding. Okay. If it makes sense. Very interesting. And then he goes on to say, and neither does Tawheed mean that Allah Azza wa Jal is a no from any type of jinns. Meaning what? No, and jinns, universal concepts. Mm -hmm. And we study about this in uh, Ilmul Mantik. 
no antigens can be translated to mean species and genus. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uni this is by way of uh, example. Yeah, but yeah. in essence, a genus is a universal concept. Mm. And the no is also a universal concept. Mm. We talk about this as the five, the five universal concepts. Mm. This is taught in the science of logic. Mm -hmm. Jins means what? I read for you uh, the definition from Moj's film, yeah, Mantik, yeah. and inshallah we'll speak about this book perhaps next week. Inshallah. Or if we don't complete this tradition, inshallah continue it next week. Inshallah. We have a few minutes remaining, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. الكلية الذي كانت أفراده يعني will go by نوع before will go with نوع الكلية الذي كانت أفراده متفقة في الحقيقة وكان هو تمام حقيقة أفراده يعني أمير المؤمنين says that Allah you cannot say that Allah is one when making a reference to a Universal concept known as a no. Sure. What is a no? A universal concept, a single universal concept mm -hmm. that has many manifestations, okay? But the reality of these manifestations are the same. Yeah. So, an example of the term of the universal concept known as no would be the human being. The yeah. human being as a single universal concept. The manifestation of this universal concept is what? The human beings that are around us. You, Sayyid Murtada, Amir Raza, myself. Yeah. All of us, human beings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct? Our reality is one. Yeah. Even though we are different mm -hmm. in terms of height, in terms of uh, color, in terms of weight, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, looks, looks yeah. but these differences that separate us are not the essential components of our existence. Okay. They are something secondary. Yeah. The look, the color, the weight, these are secondary things that differentiate us. But the reality of our creation, the reality of our being is one in yeah. terms of human being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What separates us is different. Amir al-Mu'minin says, and then if you go on the other hand, jins, yani jins is a universal concept in which the manifestation of this universal concept, there are multiple manifestations yeah. but the reality of these multiple manifestations is different so for example if you were to use the universal concept of mammals yeah under mammals you have human being you also have cow you also have horse mm. The similarity between these three things is what? Between the cow, the horse, and the human being, that they are all mammals. But the reality behind all three of us is very different. different, very different. So Amir al Mu'minin salam says over here, Wal Kail Huwa Wahid Minanas, Huwa Wahidu Minanas, you read Bihi Anno Minal Jins Fahada Mala Yajuz Alayh li Anna Hu Tashbih Wajalla Rabbuna Wataala and Dalik. In that, even your understanding of God, that He is one, but if you feel or you understand or you think that He is one of a kind. Oh, yeah. Even though he's unique and he's one, but he's one of a kind yeah, yeah, yeah. in which that there can be another universal concept through which there can be a manifestation of this single one. Mm. That understanding of Tawheed is wrong. Wow. And this will make a lot of sense 
if we enter into the bahath or the debate or the discussion when it comes to Greek philosophy and these other philosophical uh, concepts of Tawheed. But inshallah, next week uh, we will continue with this hadith. Inshallah. Hopefully it's not a very dry subject no, or no, no, no. Very too technical. No, no, no. Very interesting. Thank you very much, Sheikh, for this beautiful hadith and the beautiful insight uh, into the chapter of Tawheed. Uh, inshallah, we will see the viewers next week live from London. The Live Faith Book, A Journey Through Ideology. Thank you very much for tuning in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.